Hey guys, Joseph here. Welcome back to the channel. So this time I got my hands on the brand new Sony X95J. This is the 65 inch version and it comes packed with the brand new XR processor, also known as the cognitive processor from Sony, which enhances colors and it comes closer to the human eyed vision. So let's see if this TV is actually worth your money. Welcome to the channel, guys. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't, and if you enjoy this kind of content, I'm Jolster, and let's do this! So the ports are located on the left hand side of the TV, and we have the cable antenna port, LAN port for internet, optical for audio, the remote, and then we have port number 3 and 4, which are HDMI 2.1, that means that it supports 4K 120Hz, but one of them is going to be EARC. That means that we're going to have to just only one left for consoles and the other one for audio. Then we have port number two, which is regular 2.0. And then we have one USB port. Right here on the side, we have the remote in. We also have audio and video in. And also we have the port so we can use this TV as a center speaker and headphone jack. We have an additional two USB ports. HDMI port number one and also an on and off switch for the built-in microphone Now on the other side is where you find the power cord which by the way, it's attached to the TV You can't take it off. I don't know why these companies are deciding to use this. I don't like it I rather have the opportunity to take it off just in case if anything goes wrong, right? But no, it is a one-piece so I guess that it is what it is. So the TV does give you two options to install the legs. I'm using the second option, which is the higher one, because it does give you uh, enough space. It's around three, a little bit over three inches for you to install a soundbar, just in case if you want to use a soundbar. All right, guys, so let's jump into the operating system and picture of this TV. Now, first of all, this TV is available in 65, which is the model that I have. This one sells for $2,000. There's also a 75 inch model and it's available for $3,000. And if you want to go bigger, there's also an 85 inch model, which sells for $4,500. So yes, these TVs are kind of expensive, but you know, you get what you pay for Sony. It's a great company. It has good quality products. So uh, let me get some of the information about this TV. So first of all, it has the brand new XR uh, processor, which is also known as the cognitive processor. This helps to enhance picture. It's supposed to understand how humans see and they hear and they deliver an intense contrast with deeper black levels, high peak brightness and more natural color. So that is the uh, newest addition in technology from Sony adding to this uh, new 2021 models of their TVs. It also has the Triluminous Pro, which is basically quantum dot. This also enhances colors for a more accurate and impressive picture quality. And uh, also this is a more natural and to the human eye. So that is basically quantum dot to their TVs. Remember this TV is also a full array with local dimming. So this enhances the contrast and precisely control the backlighting to bring out real life depth and detail with deep black levels and higher peak brightness. So one thing I noticed about this TV that even though with that precise uh, control backlight and the full array local dimming, I still see some blooming. You guys can see right here on the black section of this picture, there is a ton of blooming right there. And even though I already turned on the local dimming to high, but I can still see a ton of blooming. So I don't know what, what is happening here, but that's how it is, what I noticed so far. So this is also the new Google operating system, and it basically looks the same as the Android 9 OS that uh, I've been working on before. This is basically just a better or improved Android but now they call it Google TV. Honestly, it's not a big deal to me. It looks almost the same. It's just a little bit more organized and looks a little bit better. So another cool features about this TV is the X-wide angles and the anti-reflection 
encoding this TV has, which means that you can enjoy a colorful picture from any angle, even if you're standing. And also, the anti-reflective screen reduces glare in bright rooms. So what I notice is that, yes, indeed, colors are preserved even when you're watching this TV on an angle. But what I did notice is that there's more blooming. Maybe that's because of a VA panel and it's known to have blooming while watching on an angle or a different position. But uh, it is more noticeable on this TV. And also, yes, the anti-reflecting coating, it is very effective, although you can still see some reflections from light, but it is very, very minimal. There's also Dolby Vision, IMAX Enhanced, and Netflix Calibrated Mode. That means that if you go to Netflix, you're going to get Dolby Vision and Atmos support, and also in a calibration mode for you to enjoy Netflix to the maximum. And let me tell you guys, it looks absolutely stunning. It does look beautiful right here on the Netflix app. Now, something that I noticed about the Netflix Calibrated Mode is that if you choose to turn it on, the picture gets very, very dim, and that is because the light sensor is also turned on and you can't switch it off. So, you do have to sacrifice that brightness, especially if you're in a dark room. Personally, I don't like that. I much rather have control over that. So, I just switch it off and it looks so much better. The sound from this TV is honestly one of the best ones I heard from any other TV. But obviously a lot of you guys are going to connect either a soundbar or maybe your receiver with your Dolby Atmos. Which by the way this TV does support Dolby Atmos as well. But out of the box this TV is one has one of the best sounds I've ever heard. Alright guys, so we're going to start some gameplay right here with the Xbox and this TV. This is Cold War and I am running on the 4K 120 frames per second mode. And I can tell you right now, this looks nice. This looks beautiful. And it also feels very, very responsive. Yes, it is very, very smooth. So, um... Besides that, another reason I like to play it uh, 120 frames per second mode is because the input lock drops. So it usually it is much lower than regular 4K60, which is good. Surprise! <laughs> which is good if you want to play uh, this kind of games, you know, like uh, multiplayer games. Or, yes, so you're going to get faster response time and lower input lag which is great oh my goodness oh my god no oh my it the remote controller well it's still pretty big i'm not a big fan of sony re, uh, remote controllers for their tvs they're just way too big way too many buttons that i never use and they just feel it's, it's not easy to reach with one hand like if you want to power on the TV and then just scroll down to the bottom it's just so uh, cumbersome to use and still uses batteries well other companies are now switching to uh, built-in batteries with a USB type-c power or even Samsung has the solar power right here but uh, yeah that's how it is on the remote controller I'm not a big fan um, also, what I notice is that it gets stuck is for some reason. I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm trying to switch and it just doesn't work anymore. Yeah, I already turned off the TV and everything and still not working. So I have to figure out what is happening with the remote controller and this TV. All right, guys. So in the end. What do I think about this TV, the Sony X95J? Well, honestly, I don't think it's worth $2,000. Here's a comparison, a side-by-side -side comparison with the Hisense UAG, which that TV, same size, 65 inch, sells for roughly between $1,200 and $1,300. And look at this comparison. They look almost identical. In some instances, I still feel that Hisense looks better. It has, for sure, it has better black levels 
and a lot less blooming than a Sony TV, even with the XR processor. But man, Hisense is selling this TV for around $1,300 and look at the difference. So if it was me, I would just save some money and go for the Hisense or if you want to spend a little bit more for a 65 inch, go for an older TV. But that is just my opinion, guys. Let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think about this? I'm Joster, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Joster out.